If you don't have healthy ways to cope with that stress, then the first thing that goes out the window is usually pleasure. The more pleasure we kind of find and allow and foster in ourselves, the better we feel. What used to bring us pleasure, I know, you know, may not be the case as we get older. Those are things we oftentimes get in that um, mode, whether we're kind of like touched out as a, as a mother and kind of overstimulated physically um, in some of our roles. <laughs> week three of sexual health month and y'all this week is all about pleasure and all the things related to that um and how it contributes to our sexual health so let's get to it my name is christina peoples and i am the creator of jero what I'm Christina Saldana. I'm a women's health PA and the owner of Camel City Women's Wellness. I'm Cole Campen. I'm the owner of Triad Pelvic Health Physical Therapy in Greensboro. All right. So first off, what is pleasure and why is that so important for all of us? So overall, pleasure is kind of a broad category we can think of. It is physical and or emotional enjoyment. And that can encompass a lot of things. It's um, anything that brings us joy, satisfaction, and personal fulfillment. It can be alone or with others and in or out of the context of sex and sexuality. Yes, it does not necessarily have to be related to sex. For example, something I find pleasurable is drinking coffee on the porch outside in the morning. So it can be, it's pretty simple, but it's not necessarily always an easy concept for people um, to grasp on. And what's interesting is, is that really the desire for pleasure is one of the basic human needs really up there with the need to eat, the need to drink, and the need to sleep. So it really is our basic human right to pleasure. All right. So thinking about that and how you know, our body is designed for pleasure and connection. What are some of the benefits of pleasure and what are some of the barriers that could keep us from experiencing pleasure? So let's talk about the barriers first, because sometimes that can can kind of break the, the mold for this and kind of we can really understand why we need pleasure. Um, so two of the biggest barriers to pleasure, well, there are a lot of barriers to pleasure, but two of the bigger ones um, are stress. Stress is a huge barrier to pleasure. When we are stressed, we are not living in the present moment. We are stuck someplace in the past or worrying about something in the future. Um, and so stress is a huge thing that keeps us from being able to enjoy things in life. Um, and the other thing that's a barrier to pleasure is preconceived notions about what you should or should not enjoy. And sometimes that involves some shame involved in there. Um, and again, as we mentioned before, that could be sexual and non-sexual things. Yeah, I've been thinking about the stress piece most definitely with my own aging experience. And a lot of times I noticed that I'm experiencing more stress than pleasure and being aware of that and um, making necessary changes to fix that, I feel like it's key um, for all of us as we continue aging. Yeah, and as you, as we all age and just inquire, you know, have more and more life experiences, you're adding more things to your plate that could contribute to things you're worried about, traumas, um, whether they're small traumas, big traumas. And you kind of carry all of that with you as you go throughout your life. And if you don't have healthy ways to cope with that stress, then the first thing that goes out the window is usually pleasure. And then usually comes sleep <laughs> and maybe decreased body movement and kind of it trickles all down, but really starting with decreasing in that pleasure piece. Okay, what about the benefits? So the benefits of pleasure are really... <laughs> exponential really um and again starting with the smaller things in your day that you find pleasurable and then all the way extending all the way to sexually um 
anything that brings us joy, brings us pleasure, increases our what we call happy hormones um, or neurotransmitters in our brain, serotonin, dopamine, endorphins, as well as oxytocin. Those can all kind of help um, or those all trigger and then create this kind of happy milieu in the brain um, in kind of in our day-to-day -day experience. And when we are feeling good, usually we're taking better care of ourselves. Um, we know that pleasurable things can help improve our sleep. For example, we talked in the last session about how orgasm, people who orgasm sleep better. Um, people that have more orgasms actually live longer. And so that's all comes down to just the joy of pleasure, how it impacts our endocrine system, how it impacts our nervous system. And then really, again, going back to the stress piece, when you're doing something pleasurable, that's stress reduction in and of itself. So it sounds like, Christina, it's sort of like a, a snowball effect that the more pleasure we um, kind of find and allow and foster in ourselves, the better we feel. And the better we feel, the more receptive and like we, we are to find and experience pleasure, both in our daily life and in our sexual life. Is that accurate? Yes, that's correct. Now, with pleasure, a lot of times that's going to be experienced throughout all five senses. So that's hearing, uh, smell, taste, touch, sight, all of those senses. And I know that as we age, there are changes in those senses. They may not be as sharp um, as what they once were. And so um, what used to bring us pleasure, I know, you know, may not be the case as we get older. And um, then there are times where we have to figure out a way to adapt to that. But what are some other things that contribute to changes with sensation as we're aging? So there are, as we age, as we just spend more time on this planet, we are inflicted with different diseases. Um, we usually lump them all together and say chronic diseases. But what we're really talking about here are things um, like high blood pressure, diabetes, chronic lung disease, anything that's inflicting somebody on a daily basis um, that's affecting their heart, their lungs, their brain, well, it's also going to affect the genitalia, <clears throat> um, both for male and female people. And so a lot of things can happen there. Erectile dysfunction can take part in place, um, lack of sensation that we see sometimes with uh, diabetics, um, and then for females or vulva owners, the whole idea of menopause, menopause causes thinning of the tissue, can cause pelvic pain, vaginal dryness. And so, yes, sensations are going to change over time. In addition to all the ones that you mentioned, hearing, vision, taste, smell, those all change too. And as we'll talk about a little bit later, some of the pleasure points in the body are ju not just genitalia focused. They're also involve all of our other senses and all of our other sensations. And I think the most important thing here and something that I really encourage and, and instill in my clients is that just like everything in life, sexuality is fluid, pleasure is fluid. Just because something was pleasurable to you or um, brought you an immense amount of pleasure 10, 20, 30 years ago, it doesn't mean you have to go and try to chase that. You can have, use this as an opportunity to like define your pleasure sensations now. I think too, that really helps folks don't have maybe some of those chronic diseases understand why they might also have difficulty accessing pleasure. Because so many times, whether it's they're in another life transition or another state of, of stress or things, we oftentimes get in that um, mode, whether we're kind of like touched out as a, as a mother and kind of overstimulated physically um, in some of our roles or um, are in such a kind of cognitive heavy work job, you know, work environment or something like that. We're sort of just generally out of touch with our, our those five senses overall. And so doing, I think we'll, we'll get to discussing what are some of the ways we can tap back into those five senses that we all have to rediscover or do some of that um, pleasure mapping. But in a lot of ways, it can come down to sort of um, exiting our, our brain and re kind of getting back in touch with our, our body to discover where that pleasure resides. Because while pleasure can be um, an emotional or cognitive state, would you describe it more, Christina, as sort of um, 
easier to access physically or more rich in the physical part of our body? I think that, I think that's a loaded question. Oh, right. Okay. Well, I think, they're, I think they're all like so related. I recently saw this cartoon. I think it was on Instagram um, and it was, uh, it was a drawing, but it was a heart, a vulva and a brain. And they were all sitting at a table. I think I reposted yeah. this. They're all sitting at a table and they said, we've come to a meeting together <laughs> because we have to collaborate or something. And so really, yeah. There's a lot there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It right. makes sense. It's all intertwined. So it's not one without the other other in some kind of way, I feel like. Um, they're all connected. I just think there's more discussion about the physical piece of it. Sometimes I think the physical piece is easier to tease out because it's a lot of what we can see, we can visualize. Uh, even a client or a patient can show us. Um, and then sometimes the psychological or, or the stress component sometimes is a little bit blurry because not all the time can people really verbalize um, verbalize that. Right. So many of us are so um, not accustomed to understanding our measure that it is hard to say, I'm not sure what, you know, it's, it's hard for us to know what, what does feel good to us. You know, what are the things that bring you pleasure? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Um, but then also too, um, if we're, if our body is, is, has been in um, a pain state for so long, if we've had some of these changes over time or we're having any other, um, you know, if we've had pelvic pain or pain with inter, you know, penetration or intercourse or back pain or things like that, the body has a harder time, um, receiving pleasure because of the signals that get sent up through the nervous system of, of, of pain. So um, kind of helping to tease out some of the, uh, the pain to get an easier way to find our pleasure. But there's also some work being done on using pleasure to treat pain, um, which I think is a really fascinating sort of avenue as well. Speaking of all of that, like so we've talked about the barriers and all of those things, but how do we address that? Like we've talked about, you know, being able to adapt to those changes and, and learning new ways to experience pleasure. Um, but what are some other ways that we can address those changes? So I talk a lot. Um, I am also a yoga teacher in addition to being a PA. So I talk like I bring a lot of yoga concepts mindfulness concepts breathing exercise concepts into my work that I do because I find that everybody me included everybody can benefit from mindfulness practice breathing exercises like learning stress reduction um, because as Cole kind of hit on that when you have pain or you are anticipating something hurting or you're anticipating something not working well or you're anticipating xyz you are no longer in the present moment you're worried about what is going to happen or not happen um and so teaching people about stress reduction mindfulness um mindfulness-based medicine sometimes is what we call it in the medical field we can kind of bring ourselves back to our body and then really it's so individualized how we really break these barriers. But I think starting with mindfulness, stress reduction, education about their bodies, education about what's happening um, in really simplistic terms and simplistic ways, not because our patients and clients don't understand, but just because this is a really complex topic. Like no two people are exactly the same in any realm, but especially when it comes to pleasure, sexuality. And so really just trying to keep it as simple as possible because it's really not a simple or, uh, you know, straightforward problem usually. And I think too, the, the mindfulness piece is huge. And I, I feel like reading all about pleasure and um, all that's written about it, it sort of describes everything around mindfulness oftentimes without actually saying mindfulness in terms of really accessing pleasure in our daily lives before we're expecting ourselves to find um, you know, immense pleasure during our sexual activity. So having the, um, the mindfulness to sort of note what brings us pleasure during our day, um, to be able to say, 
you know, wow, the smell of this coffee feels really good to me. It makes me feel good. Or gosh, this pillow, the texture feels really nice. Um, and on and on like that, and just allowing ourselves simple pleasures all day long and kind of prime that pleasure pump in a way to help us be able to notice when we're having pleasure during our sexual activity. Mm -hmm. I want to say just one more follow-up on that, that yeah. that mindfulness of the senses is something that can be done at any age. So it's not just something that someone has to do, you know, at any certain age, but all throughout our life, it can really deepen our, our pleasure and you know, opportunities for joy throughout, throughout our years.